Hello my friends, if you like my work please remember to click thumb up, subscribe to my channel or hit the notification bell to be informed about new videos. I'd just like to say thank you to all my patrons, please join them if you can, the link is in the description below. In today's episode I would like to show you additional painting, different ways of getting dirty, masking with tarps and camouflage net and other interesting moments. And for starters some photos from the end of the previous stage for those who haven't seen the previous episode, but also for those who have seen it but want to refresh their memory. KF-51 Panther in all its glory with small pixel camo. The starting product for today's work looks very nice considering the possibilities offered by this construction. After the publication of the first and second episodes and after the presentation of the model to my patrons, I heard opinions that the vehicle looks like a box and is very simple. That's exactly how it is, that's why the most important thing in its case is to build interesting painting, weathering and try to create something else that will improve the appearance of the miniature. I admit that I used the tried and tested methods that you could already see on the Leopard 2A6 a few episodes ago. The external appearance is similar and forces similar solutions. But in the case of KF-51 I have a completely different livery that has been further improved and this is the most important turning point in this project. Ok, step by step. First a bit of glossy varnish to level the surface of decals and underwash. I chose the AK Interactive product to use which I diluted and applied to the model. I immediately tried to control its amount by wiping off the excess and drying the fragments I was working on at the moment. It wasn't very complicated but it takes some time. It was at this moment that I became convinced that worn winter camo would be a good solution to improve the appearance. I decided to prepare irregular patches with heavily damaged paint. That's why I covered the critical elements of the model with masking tape. I don't do it in any fancy way, but just so as not to paint over them. I used regular painter's tape with a weak adhesive and additional Tamiya tape. Heavily chipping fluid will be just right for this task. I added a bit of deck tan to the white paint to suppress the shade and applied this mixture to the model. For this I used examples of leopard painting found on the internet but I used them more as an inspiration than an exact representation of the arrangement of the spots. As you can see painting was completely without pressure, just white camo spots with different intensity of color as if they were painted in field conditions. The masking tape passed its test and after removing it I was able to start destroying the freshly applied white paint. By soaking one fragment with water I activated the chipping fluid and worked using tweezers and a brush. The results were very good exactly as I expected.
After preparing all the surfaces I prepared the diluted wash again and applied it on the white camo. As you can see it was necessary to improve the appearance and recreate the appearance of the details of the model. Winter streaking grime is a bit of forgotten product for me, but now it will be perfect for adding extra effects to vertical panels. Its application is not difficult, but you have to remember that sometimes it's necessary to use it more than once in the same place. The most important thing is not to overdo it with its amount, but on the other hand, check after drying whether stains will be visible. I usually focus on selected places and don't cover all surfaces with this effect. I think that subtle lines on the surfaces look best, but also in the recesses connecting the panels. It's time to take care of the chassis, which is a place where many modelers don't look, thinking that it's invisible place in the model. I think completely different and always try to do proper weathering there. You never know if a model won't be on public display and some judge wants to grab it with his hand to see if there is anything worth paying attention to. I am not saying this without a reason, because recently I have seen interesting photos from a competition in the USA where a judge without gloves was lifting the model up, shining a flashlight from his mobile. I don't know how I would react in this situation, but it's unacceptable. I think many of you will agree with me. Ok, to build the dried and moist mat I used VMS pigment jockey products. As you can see the application is how to say quite fast and the effects are very good and look realistic. I help myself with the accelerator which definitely speeds up the working time. I prepared the tracks in the same way. I wanted to build the dried mat on the wheels with pigments by fixing them with alkyd binders. Thanks to this I got a natural looking and irregular mat and additionally the pigment in places where it was applied in a small amount created a delicate wash. For me the effect is superb. What is the great advantage of this product is the ability to add pigment if we find that there isn't enough of it without having to reapply it. In the same way I applied pigment to the bottom of the hole, focusing primarily on the wheel area. Of course I haven't forgotten about the sides of the hull, even though they will be almost invisible. On the bottom of the hull it's worth using various tools to spread the pigments. It's worth remembering that it's very dirty place, but it's also exposed to all obstacles that the vehicle encounters on its way. That's why it's worth making large patches of dried mud here, applying more of it in the nooks and crannies, but also outline the worn lines simulating traces of branches over which the tank passes while driving. The dark shade of pigment jockey is used to make wet mud on the hull near the wheels, but also on the wheels themselves. I decided to use much less than dry mud so that the contrast would be visible.
Waiting a while for the dark mud to dry completely, I tackled the tracks for a while. I painted single red links on them counting to 10. I've seen such markings on pictures and it definitely adds a good look to the model. Putting tracks on wheels is always a bit more fun than you might think, especially if we have moving pieces. In this case they were not perfect and their behavior resulted in some obscene words on my part. But after applying and finally fixing them on the wheels I was able to work on the wet mud again. As you can see I've already done one side before and now I'm remixing VMS products, Dark Earth, Alkyd Binders in wet finish and Universal Weathering Carrier. And I applied this mixture to the hull and wheels using various techniques. In this way I use the previous foundation of dark mud and dry mud placed at the very beginning. I have always liked such stains and in my opinion they certainly diversified the surface. I tried to keep the balance so as not to lose the previously prepared layers. Even heavily diluted products can do the job. Here I created faint spots. I prepared the wheels in the same way, marking the delicate mud on the edges and in the middle. The producer doesn't mention to use the pigment jockey for airbrush on the packing, but why not to try it? Ok, hold my beer and watch this. And it's possible and gives a great effect. You can even leave it like this without using pigments, but you know perfectly well that I like to add them to my model, so it will be the same here. Maybe not on the sides of the hull, but in the area of the turret ring and on the rear part of the hull, for sure. Also at the bottom of the turret. But before I even start working with the pigments, there are some metallic scrapes all over the model to give it a bit of a still look. Gently trying not to overdo it. A soft pencil is a very good tool for this task. I used a bit of oils to paint the dirt. It was a bit hard to get a satisfactory effect in some places because of the camo color, but in the end the job was done in the most important places. Notice how I distribute the paint using thinner. Now it's time for the pigment. I apply it mainly in the places I mentioned earlier, which are around the turret ring and on the back plate.
A few drops of universal weathering carrier are enough to fix, which sticks the pigment to the surface very well. Of course, in the end, the accelerator did the last job. After imposing the turrets, almost all the work done is covered, but it doesn't change the fact that it's necessary. Especially because large amount of dust collect in these places because they aren't exposed to constant abrasion during the use of the vehicle. Oh, one note. Such a wide brush is very useful for evenly distributing the pigment if you want to create a layer of dust. Certainly not much. Ok, now it's time for some fuel stains and spill marks. For this I usually use an oil paint from 502 Aptylon called Engine Grease. I dilute it in various proportions and apply it to the model. You can also make vertical streaks with it as before with winter streaking grime but they will be much more pronounced. In addition some small spots will also do well on our model just to use the specking technique but it's worth checking beforehand how big the spots will be on a piece of paper. And of course oil leaks on the wheels. I have no doubts that they will enrich their appearance even despite the previously applied dry and wet mud. The paint will penetrate the pigment creating an interesting effect. Small splashes of mud I prepared from a mixture of pigment jockey and pigment. I applied this paste to the lower surfaces of the side covers along the entire length of the model as well as at the front and rear of the vehicle. I did the same with dark earth and additionally on the edge I applied irregular patches imitating larger amounts of wet mud. I improved the effect of salt around the exhaust. It was enough to wrap in a little black pigment, although in total it's a very dark grey. I ran a hobby knife along the sides of the model to make traces of abrasions from branches and bushes. I always say to do it with special care because it's easy to damage the paint. 
I mean, it's about doing damage to the paint, but you have to feel the moment when it's an imitation and when it's actually damaging of our work. The barrel of the machine gun was wiped with a soft pencil and I made an imitation of salt with pigment. Might be a bit of exaggeration, but it looks nice. As an introduction to the additional masking I had to add U-shaped handles. The easiest way is to make them of wire, but if they are to fulfill their role it's the best if they sit firmly in plastic. That's why I drilled holes for the wire with 0.3mm bit, which I glued with a bit of black CA glue from VMS. I used 3 drill bits for about 60 holes, so now I need to make order for new ones. All masking needs three elements. The first is a flexible modeling line, the second is paper tissue and the third is a camouflage net from AK Interactive. These three elements will build the appropriate final appearance of the model. First I'm going to prepare the tarp. I soak a cut piece of paper with paint, PVA glue and water. After dyeing the material I dry it with an accelerator so it doesn't stain my fingers but it's still flexible. Let the work go on and I would like to mention my wonderful patrons who support me in what I do. Massive thanks guys! Please don't forget that you can be one of them. It's very easy because now there is a chance to enter this superb group without pay a penny for 7 days free trial. This way you can check whether you like what I publish for my patrons or not. From technical side you need to join for free by filling all gaps patron wants and then you can surf on my page with no limits, watch and download all superb high resolution pictures, watch progress shots, check stories with unpublished in other medias models, read the articles and enjoy other benefits, but about the 7th day you need to decide if you stay with me or go back home. Please remember that your support is highly appreciated and helps me do what I do here at Coldemons PL and what I love the most. Thanks to this I will try to give you some interesting content to keep you informed and entertained. The second color is German Field Grey, which after dilution I will use to color part of the tarp. Note that I didn't cover the entire piece of fabric with it. Dark grey will be used to make even darker places but there will be definitely less of them. Of course the paint is also diluted and the material is dried with an accelerator. Finally a drop of green brown to make small dots or dirt. In this way I have a large piece of material ready to be cut or torn into smaller elements. The largest fragment will be prepared at the beginning and placed on the front of the vehicle. The others will be much smaller. After cutting it to approximate size I start to tear it so that its edges are rugged. Lying is very simple because we just need tap water to soften the paper and activate the glue that it's soaked with. Laying on the model depends on our imagination. Giving shapes and the final appearance depends on the construction of the vehicle and the effect we want to achieve. The great advantage of this solution is that the individual elements can be merged with each other and after drying the connection will be almost invisible. Note that the multicolored tarp adds an interesting look even after placing it on the model and tearing it into smaller pieces.
Leaving the tarp to dry, of course the accelerator did its job, I started preparing the camouflage net. First I needed it properly so that it wasn't straight as after ironing and then I strongly stretched the patterns cut out in it. I only need a small piece for the molo and it will be enough. And of course the mesh can be painted in any color. I played mine a bit on ivory, but you can't see it practically at all so I skipped showing this step. Here I also prepare a fragment for a specific place on the model and form it using PVA glue. In some places you need thin glue and in some places where the mesh has a problem with lying on the model in the right shape, you need to support yourself with a bit of thick glue. And here as in the case of tarp, we arrange the selected fragment so that it's realistic and looks nice on the model at the same time. Sometimes it takes a while but trust me, it's worth the effort. And once again I will repeat, smaller pieces are better than larger ones, even if in reality the crews cover half of the vehicle with one piece, it will 100% look bad on the model. When all the masking nets are in the place and the glue is dry enough you can safely start tying the flexible line. And right now I'm using the previously made wire handles which I prepared so carefully by breaking my drills. And here you will also have to think about how to braid the line to make it look good. Therefore gluing it should be left at the very end of this stage. It also takes some time due to some difficulty in taming the line. Painting is another matter. It's best to have a small piece of paper and tweezers for this. We just put the paper under the line and paint it. Tweezers can be used for the same but then we will be painting a slightly stretched line which may result in it slipping out of the tweezers grip. Risky but necessary in some places. For example where the line lies on the camouflage net. If you would like to ask about the color, I saw a rope stretch on a military vehicle and it was an even lighter shade than what you see here. It certainly shouldn't be left unpainted. We are slowly approaching to the end. There are still little things to do. One of them is arranging a dozen or so atom leaves on the vehicle in places where they could stay a bit longer and the wind and speed of the vehicle didn't blow them away completely. I glued them with sand and ballast freeze from VMS. The bandages is the same paper I used for the tarp but here it's cut into thin stripes. I will make an imitation of binding on the gun barrel from them. Of course, this is going to be a controlled mess. I fixed them with well diluted PVA glue and in addition to the barrel I also threw a few stripes on the roof of the turret, introducing a little variety. If I have winter painting and elements of winter masking then a little snow won't hurt anybody and it will certainly add an interesting look. I sprinkled snow from Acre Interactive on the PVA glue and left it to dry. What didn't stick, I just blew it off. Quick and simple solution. There is also some snow on the wheels. I glued it in the same way as on the turret. At the end I left myself to do a wash on the black elements which are the nutter station and the antennas. I used diluted pigment jockey for this exactly the one that is on other elements of the model. Mounting these parts is the last stage of work and adding them to the model is like decorating a birthday cake. Great feeling. Yeah. 
Oh, and I forgot about very light grey wash on the winter camonet. Just quick improvements for the very end of work. In the end it looks like this. It must be admitted that it's a piece of model and will certainly attract attention in the collection with its size but also shape. My goal was to build interesting camo and weathering so that the boxy look would be varied with different effects and colors. Additional camouflage was also intended to break the even lines of the vehicle and it seems to me that I managed to complete this task. Project tank is not my favorite type of vehicle, but building such a model has its advantages. You can create it in an unlimited way through your own solutions in every field while working on the model. Nobody can say that something is not true. Ok my friends, thank you for taking a few minutes to check my work. If you like what I do, please don't forget to subscribe to the channel, click like and write a comment. That's all for today, see you next time, cheers!